Hello, welcome to a new Oxygen XML webinar. Uh, my name is George Bina and I will be your host uh, today. Uh, every Wednesday at the same time, that is uh, 8 a.m. U.S. Pacific time or uh, 11 a.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern time and in Europe between uh, 4 and 6 p.m. Uh, we have this, uh, we have a webinar organized that covers different technologies or different products uh, from our team. We, we scheduled a series of seven webinars and uh, we already uh, presented three of them covering uh, JSON, HTML support in Oxygen, as well as a new product called uh, Oxygen Feedback. Uh, if you missed any of them and you want to see what was there, uh, we have recordings of these webinars available. Uh, you can find them on, uh, on our events page under past events. Today we will talk about Markdown and I invited my colleague uh, Alex Gitianu, uh, who is the lead developer for the Oxygen authoring team. Uh, but before I really give control to Alex. Here it is some useful information. Uh, all the webinars are recorded and this webinar will also be recorded. And the recording will be available from the event page on our website as well as on the Oxygen XML YouTube channel. Uh, please ask questions uh, as we go. You can use the questions panel into the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, or you may use Twitter if you want, but just mark the questions with the, the Oxygen XML hashtag or uh, address them to the Oxygen XML account so we can easily spot them. And now let me give control to Alex. So I'll try to make Alex presenter. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Hello, George. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, this webinar. Um, thank you, George, for your kind introduction. Um, I'm really excited to talk about uh, Mardown support in Oxygen because uh, Oxygen uh, started as a, an XML editor, but in the last couple of years we've invested um, a lot in uh, providing support to uh, other types of uh, markup languages like um, Markdown or JSON. Um, so, um, yeah, really glad to, to be here. Before we begin, a short uh, agenda about uh, the topics that uh, we'll touch in this webinar. Um, we'll talk first about Markdown, um, what's a Markdown language, what uh, uh, makes it so popular among all these uh, existing markup languages. Uh, we'll see what editing experience Oxygen offers for Markdown. Um, a trend that we've seen in the last couple of years is that of uh, hybrid projects in which both Markdown and Dita, another markup language, are both uh, used. So we'll see how these two work together and how Oxygen helps those working in such uh, hybrid projects. And last but not least, we'll see how we can validate and check for completeness our markdown documents, so a bit on the quality assurance side. Uh, so what is markdown? Markdown is a markup language which is quite easy to learn I bet that after a quick look on uh, here on the right, uh, you can see a short topic about how to create a Google account on your Android mobile phone. And I bet that just after a quick look at this uh, topic, you'll be able to create similar topics uh, yourself. So it's really easy to learn. And it's also uh, quite minimalistic. Um, the markup is not too cumbersome, not too overwhelming. You can easily distinguish the content by uh, from markup uh, just uh, with a glance. There are many authoring tools available out there. Um, you really need a text editor, 
but uh, there are also other editors that offer um, more advanced support like you'll see in Oxygen and of course there are uh, many publishing uh, choices available out there, many static site generators that know how to um, consume markdown and produce um, uh, HTML or, or other types of uh, outputs. So these are just a few of uh, uh, the strong points uh, of uh, Markdown. Um, so let's see how you would work with Markdown inside uh, Oxygen. So I'll switch to Oxygen. So first of all, you'll need to create a Markdown document. You can do, do that by using uh, the new action from the toolbar. And if you uh, write Markdown here in the filter, uh, this one here is the default template in Oxygen. There's not much in it because um, there's no one size fits all solution. I mean, each template depends on a person's project and needs. So Oxygen lets you create your own templates. So if I go in the same dialog again, but this time I choose this Markdown documentation task, this is my own custom template. You'll notice that this template has more meat to it. Um, there is a comment here uh, for the user to paragraph a list. Um, but the idea here is that it's quite simple in Oxygen to create your own templates. Um, if you look here in the project view, this is my template. In Oxygen, a template is just a file with the name of the file being the name of the template and the content of the file being the content of that template. Next, you need to tell Oxygen how, where to look for those templates. So in preferences on the document templates, you put the path to the templates directory. In this case, I've used the project directory edit a variable to, to make it portable. So it will work to everyone that's uh, using this uh, particular project. But um, let me open a Markdown file with uh, even more content so I can uh, <clears throat> show you, so I can better show you Oxygen support. So this is the Markdown editor in Oxygen. Uh, you notice that it's a two-side uh, editor, so there is a preview area on the right and on the left it's the actual Markdown content. So on the right it's a preview uh, on how your Markdown content maps to HTML. You'll notice here on, on the bottom it says HTML. We have two more previews. Uh, data and X data, but I will talk about um, those a bit later. So this is the HTML view. Uh, from the toolbar, I can switch between uh, multiple tags display modes. Full tags, for example, will show a placeholder for each element so I can better understand how markdown markup is being mapped to HTML markup. These two views, uh, personally I will uh, use less uh, information. Um, these two views are synchronized as I scroll in the markdown content. The preview will scroll as well. If I place the caret somewhere in the markdown content, the caret will be placed in the same position in the HTML preview. If I make a selection, the selection will be mirrored so I can uh, better understand how this uh, content gets uh, uh, converted. If at some point I don't need or don't want this preview mode, there's a hide preview action in the contextual menu if I want it back, there's the show preview uh, action. I can also export my markdown file to HTML like so. And this one here is actual HTML, the HTML version of my markdown file. So if for whatever reason I need this HTML, I can use this uh, convert action. 
Now let's focus a bit uh, on the actual markdown content. Um, you've noticed that there is syntax highlight to help you uh, better identify maybe codes or lists or bolded content. If I want to insert text, of course, I can just uh, type to add markup. If I know the markup, I can add it manually. But I can also use the actions on the toolbar here. So I can mark this word as being italic or I can create an ordered list or a table. Um, an useful action is this one that inserts a, an image. I can browse for my image. I can put an alternate text for it and uh, the entire markup will be inserted. Um, now, if you're thinking that it's a nice looking editor, uh, too bad that it's not in a browser, uh, don't worry because you're in luck. Uh, Oxygen also has um, an editor that it's in the browser is called uh, Oxygen Web Author and it also has support for Markdown. So this is a similar Markdown file but in the browser opened in our Oxygen XML Web Author. You will notice the a similar syntax highlight, similar actions on the toolbar, and a bit of validation here that I will hide because I don't want to spoil the upcoming surprises that we have installed for you. Um, this web author also empowers interesting um, use cases. Like for example, here I have um, a published version of uh, Markdown. Um, it's uh, published in, um, in HTML, but here I have an edit link edit online. So if I click this link, um, it will use the Oxygen XML web author to open the actual markdown source that was used to generate that HTML and I can edit uh, this content and uh, save it back in this case in this case the source is on uh, github so i can uh, commit it i will commit it uh, back to github and then maybe a continuous integration process will publish it again and i will see on the fly uh, the the new content um, right so You've noticed that um, I've mentioned in Oxygen that we have these two other preview modes, DITA and XDITA. Uh, they are related with these DITA Markdown hybrid project that I've talked about. So in the wild, there are documentation projects written exclusively in Markdown or exclusively in DITA. But uh, there are cases in which you have your main documentation project written in DITA and then you have SMEs like um, subject matter experts, like developers, who are contributing content in Markdown. So this is something that we've um, seen a lot in the last couple of years. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with DITA, a short introduction, so DITA is another markup language, just like Markdown is, but it is XML based and it is an open standard, right, for writing and publishing um, content. Um, a strong point of DITA is that it has a semantic markup, so you're not marking content as being a paragraph or a list, you're marking it as being a short description or maybe a procedure 
So you're separating the meaning from uh, the presentation. It also has strong reuse concepts and built-in mechanisms for restrict, restricting and specializing it. Uh, actually, the, the bird on the DITA logo is actually a finch, which is a bird that has specialized its beak according to its diet, one of the strong points of DITA as well. And a direct benefit from the fact that it's an st open standard, there's a huge ecosystem of publishing, publishing choices available, uh, some of which are open source based on the DITA Open Toolkit, and others are commercial, uh, who offer you maybe more functionality, maybe dynamic delivery platforms um, that you might want to try at some point in your um, project uh, lifespan, if you, if you um, notice you need a little bit more. Um, so let's see how Oxygen helps those working in these a hybrid project, DITA and uh, MARTA, while they create and work on markdown files. So back to Oxygen. I will open a DITA map. So a DITA map, it's sort of a table of contents. Well, it's more than that, but we can think of it as a table of content in which you aggregate and bring together different pieces of information to create a, um, a deliverable. And in it, you'll notice that I have data uh, topics, um, concepts that were written by uh, technical writers, perhaps, but I also have markdown topics. Um, which maybe in this case, uh, being a car maintenance manual, uh, were written by an engineer. So what differs when I refer a data topic or a markdown for topic is this format here. I'm saying that format marked, uh, is markdown. So this, this is how um, the Open Toolkit will know to, to process this as a markdown file. Now let's open one of these markdown files. You see this one, it's a markdown file. But uh, the beauty is that if I decide to publish my this, this hybrid project to maybe, let's say, a data map, web hub responsive, or a PDF, or an EPUB, it won't really matter if the source was in written originally in data or in markdown. I'll obtain the same beautiful web hub responsive. Or, um, or PDF. So this is, um, you, you may think of uh, a gateway for Markdown to all the publishing choices uh, that DITA offers, like PDF and EPUB. You can just bring your Markdown uh, topics into a DITA map and then publish to all these outputs. So right, so this is the web hub responsives, and, and here I have the garage concepts, like what a water hose is, and this came from data topics, like I said, and I have the garage tasks, which were originally written in uh, Markdown, but uh, that how the source, what the source was, it's completely transparent. Um, so let's see how Oxygen helps those writing Markdown in such hybrid project and what you can do in, the, in these Markdown files. So first of all, in a, in a YAML header, the beginning of the Markdown file, a YAML header begins with three dashes, uh, followed, matched by other three dashes. This is a YAML header. And in it, you can put metadata, like the author, or the source or um, some keywords. So if I switch now to the data preview, and maybe we'll show the tags a bit so you can understand, you see that all these metadata are mapped to their data counterparts. So I have the author element and the publisher element and maybe permissions and so on, so uh, metadata. 
Uh, next, the first heading that I have here creates a data information type. By default, it creates a topic, but in this attributes section that follows the heading, I can control which type of information type gets um, generated. So if um, I have nothing here, it will generate a topic. But if I put dot task or dot concept, it will change the information type. So now with dot task, it will create a task. And here it will, the procedure will be steps. So uh, we have the data semantics. We, um, and um, let's see what else uh, we had here. Right, so if you have images, the images begin with an exclamation mark. You'll notice that these two are uh, mapped to the data image element. You can also create references to other um, topics who are written in Markdown or in DITA. And um, in case you are using data keys, you can also create key references. For example, I have uh, in my project, I have defined the data key uh, water hose, which is ma mapped to the water hose concept. And I'm, I'm creating a reference to that concept like so. I, I won't go into details, uh, but if you're interested, then I can give you, just let me know, I can give you more resources and you can read about what a data key is and uh, what benefits uh, it brings. Um, right, and the full syntax, if you want to uh, see the full supported syntax, um, you can follow this link and um, you'll see exactly the full syntax that is uh, supported in uh, for Markdown in this uh, the hybrid data Markdown project. And this reminds me that I forgot to mention that uh, in Oxygen's Markdown editor, we support the GitHub flavored Markdown because I think that's important because there are so many uh, Markdown flavors out there. Um, right, I, I also want to mention here lightweight data as well, which is a proposed standard for expressing simplified data documents in either XML, HTML or Markdown. So the idea behind lightweight data that I find it uh, important is that the model, the structure is what matters the most, not the markup. So let's not uh, dwell too much into discussion that XML is better or Markdown is better or HTML. The model is what matters the most. This is why we use a markup language from in the beginning, right? To model this information into our documents. So Lightweight Data says, this is the model. If you like it, then you can express it. You can serialize it in XML and we'll call it XData or in HTML and it's called HData or in Markdown and we'll call it MData. So if you want to, if you like the lightweight data model and you decide to use it, all you need to do is when you refer your markdown file in the format attribute just specify mdata instead of markdown and then this markdown file will be treated as a lightweight data topic in its markdown form and that's why we have this x data preview here to see how your markdown file will be interpreted as a lightweight data topic. So if, if we 
look at the data preview, you'll notice that this first paragraph here is just a plain paragraph. When uh, treated as a generic markdown. But for the lightweight data model, if we switch to XData uh, preview, we notice that this one here is actually a short description because that's what the lightweight data model uh, declares. It says that the first paragraph will be the short description and the short description it's important and in it you the the user must understand quickly what this topic is about so and it has different um, uses when a, a data topic is um, published to html responsive uh, or something else the, the short description um, will be used uh, to create a better user experiences um right so and uh i won't go into too much details if you're interested about lightweight data just let us know like i said and we can provide um, other uh, resources we have uh, other webinars uh, dedicated to this topic um, it's interesting, you can create uh, content references between uh, your markdown files uh, and uh, data files uh, and other references you can create, so quite, uh, quite powerful. Uh, now let's, uh, it's time to talk a bit about some quality assurance aspects in, uh, in our documents. And because we are using a markup language, in this case Markdown, there are two facets to this quality assurance. First, we can talk about content quality, like style and voice and what tone of voice we use um, in our uh, topics. Or maybe we decide that we should use the Oxford comma in it to avoid uh, incorrect uh, meanings like in this uh, well-known internet example in uh, when uh, if someone reads it it might understand that my parents are Lady Gaga and Humpty Dumpty but with a markup language there's also a structure quality that we need to worry about um, we want to make sure that our documents abide to our model um, for example, uh, perhaps we have, I have a list with only one item and that doesn't really make sense. Just use a paragraph instead or maybe I have a reference to an image uh, like this one over here but it's missing the actual reference. Or maybe I use headings and there's a missing head heading level. I jump from heading one to heading three and maybe the publishing pipelines break or uh, give me something absurd from, from my source. So these are uh, structure quality aspects that I need to worry about in my documents. So let's see how we can um, tackle these challenges. Well, if we think about it, all these rules and standards form a style guide. So a style guide is a set of rules and standards about how I write and design content. And each company usually has such a style guide, but they tend to become quite large, uh, pack a lot of information. So it's quite difficult for a technical writer to learn it by heart and to apply everything from the style guide while writing uh, these uh, topics. So the question that arises is how do we enforce a style guide? How do we automate its rules? Well, if we think, if we talk about content quality, maybe we can use Veil. Well, actually, we can use Veil, which is a tool to automatically analyze files to ensure they follow uh, certain 
vocabulary style guide. Veil, it's a project on GitHub. It supports plain text, but also markup, with one of the markup languages supported being Markdown. That's why it is important for this particular case. We have Markdown documents. And Veil has a YAML-based extension system to write um, rules because, again, with a style guide, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. So you need to offer um, people the mechanisms to create their own style guides. This is a sample veil rule, an existence rule. Uh, veil has, um, I think, around a dozen such uh, rule types, like um, maybe substitution rule or conditional rule. But this one is an existence rule, and it catches those cases when you use punctuation in headings. So you see the message says, don't use end punctuation in headings. And it uses a regular expression to catch these um, these situations. Um, these regular expressions can be a challenge to write. Um, if uh, if you want, I can decipher this one for you. But um, trust me, I, when I say that, <laughs> I can decipher it. But the good news is that there are existing style guide implementation in Veils that you can use as starting points. For example, the Microsoft Writing Style Guide and the Google Developer Style Guide, uh, Documentation Style Guides. So if you take a look of, if you know, if you read these style guides and you agree with the majority of uh, their rules, then you can uh, begin from them and maybe tweak them, their rules a bit to match your own situation. So it's um, it's a lot easier than starting from scratch. So how you run Veil, I'll show you. Uh, Veil has um, launchers for Windows, Linux, and Mac, also um, a server. Oops, not this one. So let's open a terminal. So in a terminal, I can invoke a veil and say maybe um, and validate this markdown file. And you see that it uh, finds an error at line three. It uh, says use the Oxford comma, uh, but uh, I can invoke it maybe. It, it, it can also give JSON as an output. Maybe it looks a bit better. Uh, it's great for using it in continuous integration, um, pipelines, uh, but um, the best moment to fix an error is at editing time, from my point of view. So as soon as someone uh, writes something that is not according to the style guide, that's the best moment to let him know and he can fix it. But um, running Veil from um, the command line like so, it can be quite uh, annoying um, for a technical writer that writes a markdown file. So with that in mind, I've created um, an Oxygen plugin that uh, runs Veil on the current markdown editor and you have uh, and uh, pinpoints these validation errors to the, the the precise location. So here you see that um, I forgot to use the Oxford comma. It says use the Oxford comma in a list of three more items, the, the error message. And I also have this little book here. If I click it, um, it will open 
the topic in my style guide where uh, the usage of commas is explained, where I can understand why the, using the OS4 comma is recommended and maybe even refresh my memory about other uh, comma usages. Um, and again, like I said, you will see this error as soon as you type something that uh, breaks uh, the validation that is not according to the style guide rule. So this one over here. So now it's very easy for me to fix it by adding the comma in the proper places. And that's it. Um, this uh, veil, this oxygen veil plugin, it's not yet released. We, we intend to release it as an add-on. Uh, so in the future, all, all you need, to, all that you will need to do is go to help install new add-on and um, it will appear here alongside other add-ons that we offer like uh, maybe the git client or the batch converter and so on uh, but if you're interested in it um, and uh, want to give it a try just let me know in the questions areas and I will uh, tell you how you can get an early access uh, of it um, right so the second facet that I've mentioned here is structure quality because we use a markup language to encode a meaning, uh, a model in our documents. And it's quite a challenge because markdown is also not a standard, so there are no built-in mechanisms to check that you get the proper markdown or somehow to check um, the, the, the syntax. So how, how do we make these checks? How do we check if it respects, if it actually respects the model and the structure? Well, I can show you what uh, some people are currently do doing right now. So for example, the documentation from IBM Cloud is written in, um, in Markdown. And what they did is they created, they have of course, they have their own style guides. They've written style guides about how to uh, write the markdown topics. Um, they have a lot of information, for example, on how to use the how to, how to encode metadata in it. You see, you must be it ha must have three dashes by other three dashes. Uh, when you write the years metadata, make sure you put maximum two. And don't forget that the date format uh, should be this one over here. So again, a lot of information for a technical writer to, to remember by heart. They also have templates. Um, where is that templates? So they also have templates um, in which they have um, many comments with a lot of hints for the user about how to write, how to encode. Um, and they also have, um, I would say metadata, you see, even though Markdown, Markdown, it's not, doesn't have, it's not a semantic um, language, markup language. Uh, some people using it have discovered that they need a bit of semantics. So um, they use this uh, attribute. So they defined uh, this metadata at the beginning of the, of the file, and then they use it uh, like this one over here after a paragraph says that this paragraph is actually the short description and um, after a code block, you see there's this metadata that marks it uh, as a code block. So again, we thought, well, how do, how can we help people um, have a 
quality structure with Markdown, how we can help them tackle these consistency challenges. And we thought that, well, XML has Schematron, for example. Schematron is a, an open standard for writing business rules for XML. And Schematron does structure checks too. For example, this one over here is a Schematron rule that says a topic should have a short description. And if a short description is missing, then the user will see a human readable message um, to help him understand the problem and how to fix it. So we thought, could we use Schematron for Markdown? Well, Markdown syntax maps to a subset of HTML tags. So we could apply the Schematron on the HTML but with some back mapping support because we want to localize the, the validation errors in the original markdown file, not, not in this intermediate HTML format. And we did that and um, let me show you what we have right now in Oxygen. So, So this is the template that I've shown you from IBM Cloud. And you notice that I have here a validation error and it says that the matching three dashes from my YAML header is missing. So I will immediately put the matching three dashes. But wait, there's something else wrong with it. Apparently I have here a year which is not a year format so let me fix that. Still there's something wrong with the years metadata. Apparently I have too many years specified. I will read, understand what the issue is and afterwards I will leave just the creation year and the year when it was last uh, modified, <clears throat> just like the style guide recommends. So I've created Schematron files to enforce and automate the IBM Cloud style guide. Another example that I have is this one over here. So let me validate it like so. So we better see what's wrong with this topic. So the first thing that is not according to my style guide is that the title is too long. It should be uh, less than 45, uh, 75 characters. So um, I'll fix this and next. Here's a list which, ha which has just one item. I'll put a new, a new list item here. Still there's something wrong here. Apparently, according to my style guide, the list item should not end with a semicolon. I'll make that correction as well. What's next? Well, we have a link with the same text as the reference. So we can either remove the link text or maybe put some alternate text here. Um, here is a link without a reference. It doesn't make any sense, so let's just remove it. And another thing that it's not according to my style guide, I have here uh, a code block with uh, very long lines and for whatever reasons my style guide uh, it's against that so I will uh, format a bit this code block and save it and now uh, this topic respects the style guide. 
So how does this work with Schematron? Well, if we look at the HTML preview, uh, oops, not this one. And let's also present the full tags like so. You'll notice that uh, there's a corresponding HTML element for each of the markdown markup. So when I write my Schematron file, I write it to match this HTML correspondent. So if I have a, an ordered list and it has just one list item, this violates the style guide because a list should have more than just one item. Or if I have a reference, an A element for in HTML, uh, which has the same uh, reference as the text, I will give a validation error saying that link's text is the same as the reference. Or maybe if I have an image without a source attribute. So uh, this is how I write my Schematron file. Um, another thing that I must do after I do that is to go to Option Preferences on the Markdown page and here specify a link to my Schematron file. So I can either validate through HTML content. So this is a Schematron file that applies on the HTML um, conversion for Markdown, but also for those DITA Markdown hybrid projects, I can write a Schematron that matches on the DITA uh, version of the Markdown and makes checks on, uh, on that uh, content. And uh, you can see that in this case, I have uh, both of them. So here I have an MDS DITA Schematron as well, which um, does other checks like uh, checking if the line blocks uh, are too long or um, if the title is too long and, and so on. Right, so the idea is that it's it really makes sense to enforce and automate your style guide and it's possible to do it for Markdown as well. And to have content quality and structure quality, Veil and Schematron together are a solution and a great match. They have a bit of an overlap because Schematron can also uh, make text assertion as well, but um, you can have uh, the best of both worlds. Thank you for uh, staying with me until now. I hope uh, you found this uh, webinar interesting. If you have any questions that uh, you've asked or you didn't ask yet, please ask them now. George? Thanks, Alex. And thanks everyone for asking a number of questions already. Uh, let's uh, go through some of them and uh, try to provide answers so uh, not everyone can get, let's say, a, a more complete picture of uh, uh, the ideas that uh, Alex presented. So one question was, uh, is Markdown validated against the DTD or XSD as it is the DITA XML? Uh, one of the key aspects of DITA being programmatic validation of conformance to a structure uh, as the content is authored. So this question came in quite early in the presentation and Alex didn't went at that point uh, through the Schematron support. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, I guess part of the validation is done uh, in that preview part. So when you 
have the conversion to data or lightweight data. Uh, there is already going on some validation, let's say, on the content. If the content, if the markdown content cannot be converted to data, you will automatically get uh, an error in that case. Uh, but then we provide, as Alex uh, uh, presented, the Schematron validation support, uh, where we you can write Schematron rules to check the structure of the document and also maybe look into some of the text content because Schematron also has regular expression support inside, so you can match on an element and then uh, apply regular expressions uh, on on its content. Um, so one possibility here is that the, the Schematron is applied on the HTML equivalent, and actually Markdown is was uh, created as a, a, a form of writing HTML in a, a simpler human way than uh, uh, putting in the HTML tags. So it really makes sense to check. Uh, with Schematron on the HTML structure because that will be directly matching the, the markdown structures. Uh, but then we also allow you to, to use a Schematron on the converted data if uh, if you want to have these higher level checks. Let's say the, the Schematron, the markdown converts to data, but then on that converted uh, part, you can apply additional Schematron rules to make sure that what you get is uh, what your further processing workflow expects, let's say. And one interesting aspect with this Schematron validation, uh, the one applied on the HTML, is that it is not related to data. Uh, so you can use that markdown maybe through some other publishing uh, workflow or in some other way in directly into your application but then you need to do some checks you can do that with the with the uh, schematron on the structure and maybe employ also the veil and have additional checks on on the content uh, another question I just wanted to know if you have some live examples of how your customers use the, this hybrid model, data uh, for documentation and markdown by subject matter experts. Uh, do you know, uh, Alex, uh, any public uh, version? Because Radu, my colleague Radu, is also uh, in the webinar and he responded that he was in touch with a number of customers, but he does not not know any public uh, publicly available right we, we don't have the the liberty to talk or present uh, uh, <laughs> about these um, companies that uh, use data and markdown and i'm not sure if there's a we for example we uh, we have our user guide uh, public available on github but i i i'm, I'm not i don't know of uh, any other company that has it and uses uh, this hybrid model. Um, I'll search it up, and if I find something, then um, I'll I'll let you know. I'll write you a follow-up email. Okay. Uh, then uh, there was a comment regarding regular expressions that can be difficult to write, and uh, a plug for a website regex101.com. I haven't used that, but Probably it's a uh, it's a good resource. Um, how did Alex trigger the application of uh, Veil on that uh, Markdown document? Uh, Alex, can you show? Uh, I guess uh, from what I've seen, you mm -hmm. uh, it works automatically as you type. Yes, yes. it it's it's um, embedded in Oxygen's validation and automatically automatic validation so um, uh, you don't have to do anything special you just um, write your markdown file um, and um, the valid veil validation is being applied you see here this use the oxford coma comes from the veil engine and uh, the plugin has 
a preferences page in plugins oxygen veil uh, validation where you can uh, where you specify the path to the veil executable that's how this the plugin knows uh, where to find veil and to invoke it with uh, with your content um, if uh, we find interest in this uh, particular plugin, then we can uh, work some more in it. Maybe give here in the preferences uh, uh, a path to a configuration file for Veil. Right now, the configuration file is detected automatically starting from the edited file. Okay, so basically this is uh, in a way uh, work in progress and uh, as Alex mentioned, uh, uh, if you are interested to uh, have early access to this uh, and the number of you already uh, asked for early access uh, in the questions panel, please uh, write us at support at oxygenxml.com uh, asking us for for uh, early access to this plugin and Alex will provide that to you. So uh, just contact us at support at oxygenxml.com for, for uh, getting access to this. Uh, does the Veil plugin give a report of the errors? And uh, as Alex presented earlier, when you validate, you also get uh, the, the list of errors in the results uh, part. And from there, you can export uh, uh, the results. Maybe you can do that again, Alex, uh, like validate and uh, uh, then yes, from this. Yes. You can export uh, as HTML, as XML, uh, so save results as text, XML, or X. So if you save this as XML, you can further uh, process uh, those results if you want. Right. Okay. Um, can we share the recording of this webinar with the summary note uh, on uh, uh, um, a blog or LinkedIn and so on. Uh, yes, the recording will is generally available, so publicly available, uh, also on YouTube. So you can use any of the sharing support that YouTube has, uh, including embedding the video in a page or uh, maybe linking to a specific time in the presentation and so on. So that's possible. Okay, uh, just to check my understanding, I'm assuming we can create a template for API documentation using Markdown, right? Uh, of course, uh, you can, if you have in mind, you know, like a specific Markdown structure that you use for API documentation and uh, uh, that just needs to be filled in with actual uh, documentation for a specific API, of course, you can save that as a template. And then, uh, uh, as Alex mentioned, a template is just a file in a folder. And then uh, users will be able to create new files based on uh, uh, those templates. Right, and they, they work in the desktop version of Oxygen as well in the web author. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in these templates, you can use editor variables that when the template is instantiated, they will expand to different values. I don't know, maybe the current date or uh, there are, uh, in our documentation, you can find the available editor variables that you can use in uh, in templates and uh, that may give you some dynamics, let's say, when the template is uh, created, when the new file is created based on that template, uh, it may contain some uh, uh, generated content by expanding those uh, editor variables. Question, uh, validation rules in Veil, is uh, the only way to express them uh, to, by using regular expressions or uh, if they get more complex uh, they could be expressed let's say in Python code or to detect the issues uh, well I'm, I'm not uh, sure about Python but um, if you should take a look at uh, Vale's um, documentation uh, alongside the, the occur of course for occurrence uh, instead of uh, giving a regular expression, you can just give uh, words directly. And besides uh, the existence rules, 
There's also an occurrence rule in which uh, maybe you verify if uh, you have more than three comas you see here or repetition. Um, so, um, yeah, just take a look at uh, the supported styles uh, rules in, uh, in Veil. Um, yeah. So basically what is possible in Veil will we will support work. yes yeah. uh, because we just delegate to that exactly engine. The, the idea is to help people see these style guide violation as soon as um, they are created in the document so they can fix it uh, right away and many of these can be implemented also with the schematron as i mentioned schematron yes. also has this regex support yes but now you can just take advantage of the uh, rules that are already developed maybe uh, using Veil and then you just plug them in or yeah so more options for for you basically um, what regex engine was used in the earlier example uh, this was about the end of the webinar uh, the question so I'm not sure exactly what example was referring to but uh, but if you used Veil, then Veil was used. Uh, if we, uh, Alex used the, uh, I don't know, Schematron, schematron. then uh, the uh, Schematron will use the XSLT-based, it's an XSLT-based implementation, so it will use the support for regular expression from XSLT in that case. Uh, can you discuss the preferences in a little more detail uh, regarding Markdown Schematron. Uh, maybe you can show that uh, uh, validation page. That uh, so how how is the Schematron mm -hmm. schema detected by, basically for uh, for a Markdown document? I guess that's right. Uh, that's the question in 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 different words. Let's mm -hmm. say. So if you, you go to Option Preferences, and then there's the Markdown page. If, if you don't see it at first, you can just write markdown here in the filter and uh, it will pin, pinpoint it. And uh, by default, it, uh, it you'll have nothing here and this will not be selected. So you have to say, yes, I want to validate uh, markdown using the converted HTML. And uh, here is the, the path to this schematron file. And if you want to validate it, uh, to validate the markdown as a data topic as well, model as a data model, just uh, put uh, select this checkbox and uh, specify the path to that other schematron file. And um, in my case, because a style guide is specific to a project. I'm saving this entire configuration in this project, in this particular project. And I do that by selecting the project options here on the bottom and using the project directory uh, editor variables instead of giving absolute paths here. So this will ensure that everyone that opens my Oxygen project will have this configuration and the validation will work automatically without them doing anything. And also that when you use other projects, you will not get uh, this uh, validation, which may not be relevant for other markdown files in other projects. So these project level options are quite uh, useful, I think, to separate, to have this uh, level of configuration and uh, uh, be able to just switch to a project and have everything set up uh, for that project and being able to share that with all the users of that project. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, built-in Slack markdown support? Uh, I would say no. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, we have that uh, uh, preview to HTML. Uh, this, if there are specific conversions for that are used by Slack, probably they will get to some form. And then uh, you can use uh, Schematron to uh, check that converted HTML 
for instance, and detect if there is something that is not supported by uh, Slack, for instance. So that that may be an option to have a check that what you have uh, works with the uh, with work in Slack, for instance. Is there a way to specify or specifying conditional content in Markdown? Well, not in Markdown, uh, but uh, if you use Markdown in uh, the context of data, then you can benefit of some topic level support, let's say, because you you will refer to the Markdown as a topic in the data map. And at that level, you can use uh, uh, topic level reuse, so you can point to the same markdown topic multiple times in the data map or in different data maps, and also profiling because uh, when you the way you refer to the markdown topic is via a topic ref element that has profiling conditional uh, support. So then you can uh, decide on a map uh, to uh, include a specific markdown topic for a specific audience or a, for a specific product. So if you take the markdown and use it in this kind of hybrid, as Alex uh, named this uh, project, uh, data markdown project, then you can take advantage of uh, uh, some of the data functionality also in connection to uh, the markdown topics. Uh, to validate uh, Markdown, do we really need to do anything with Veil if we are uh, already using Schematron against Dita? So, uh, if you are using Schematron against Dita, as you've seen earlier, and you have Schematron for Dita, then you can specify that Schematron to be applied on the converted uh, uh, markdown to data content, as you see exactly in the page that is on the screen right now. So the same markdown that the schematon that you used for data topics, you can specify it here, and then the markdown uh, files will be converted to data, and that schematon validation will be applied on the converted data content, and all the errors will be back mapped to the corresponding markdown uh, uh, part. So. So you can reuse that schematron uh, uh, just by specifying uh, uh, that schema tron schema here in this option for for the markdown. So the schematron is not an oxygen add-in. No, the schematron validation support is built in in oxygen and already available in the current version of oxygen. Uh, can the validation tool veil schematron? Uh, be deployed in an Oxygen Web Author implementation of Markdown. And I think you mentioned, Alex, that you will show that validation <laughs> in the Web Author, <laughs> but then you forgot to, to do that. So, uh, Veil is not, uh, the Veil plugin is not yet uh, in, in, the, in the Web Author, but the vi Schematron validation for Markdown is there. Yes. And, you can see here some uh, examples. So this is a, the markdown file, and on the right here, there's the validation result, um, which is based on uh, Schematron. So no spaces before punctuation, lists should contain at least two items, uh, should not end with semicolon. So yes, the, valid the Schematron validation uh, already works in your web author. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the support for Markdown to Dita to Markdown or Dita to Markdown to Dita round trip conversion? If editing throughout the round trip, uh, are conversion result consistent? Well, uh, there is support for going from Markdown to Dita and then for, for converting Dita to Markdown. Uh, but um, uh, I would not say that the results are really consistent because uh, data has a lot more semantics and that cannot be uh, mapped to markdown. So let's say you, if you are using a UI control in data, there's no way to specify uh, that in some form in markdown. So uh, you can't have a round trip, let's say, uh, in this sense. Okay. 
I want to keep editing data, but my client wants markdown. Any suggestions? Can I ever just output markdown from data? Maybe using a, a subset of elements? Yeah, so, so it is mm -hmm. possible there is support for uh, generating uh, markdown from data. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, um, you lose uh, uh, the semantics uh, uh, during that conversion. And then uh, if, you know, uh, if you want to keep using markdown, maybe you can just keep that topic in markdown and just point to that topic using uh, format equals markdown or format equals and data if you want that to be lightweight data. And uh, if you want to make changes, you will edit that. If you really want to use profiling within that topic or uh, some other data specific content references and so on, and you convert to data, then um, the, the markdown source will not reflect that even if you convert to markdown. We'll show the, res the result, the, the content reference will be yes. just some content in but the markdown. The round so trip is not needed, so if the round trip is not needed, just publish data to markdown and uh, can do you provide you a link to learn the basic uh, markdown syntax? Uh, well, I think there are a lot of, uh, if you just uh, type, you know, in Google uh, Markdown tutorial or learn Markdown, you should be able to find uh, a good number of resources. What is more interesting probably is uh, the specific syntax that is supported by the Markdown format. And uh, I know, Alex, you have already a pointer for that. Uh, it's on the data uh plugin oh, oh, right. uh, that uh, i have uh, a slide that uh, has that link if you're thinking about uh, yeah what is supported uh, when you write topic yes that one so this is the if you are interested you know what the conversion from uh, uh, markdown to data uh, what is supported in this conversion uh, when you use format equals markdown then here it is a link to that uh, reference. And um, uh, if you are interested in what is supported when you say format equals and data, then the lightweight data standard provides, uh, uh, provides that. To confirm, mData is lightweight data and format e equals markdown is not lightweight data. Uh, I see that you use data keys in markdown that it is, uh, what is this markdown extension called? Uh, well, uh, so a reference to a key, yes, so, so the answer to the first part is yes, mData is for lightweight data topics, and format equals markdown is different, is more relaxed, uh, and it will convert a topic or maybe a task or maybe a concept, it, it supports more extensions according with that syntax that uh, uh, Alex pointed earlier. Uh, and the, the, the fact that uh, key references are supported by using the syntax for uh, references in Markdown, for link references in Markdown. So you can use uh, the name of a key in, inside square brackets, and that will point to, will be like a key ref to that key in, uh, in the data conversion. Uh, can you check for or schematize for data types, as in ISO dates. Uh, so I guess you can use Schematron to identify parts of the Markdown document and then uh, apply different checks with the regex or uh, regular expressions, for instance, to see if uh, that part matches the pattern for a date or something like that or even use the XRT functions maybe to try to convert that to a date and see if that works or fails. Uh, because you can use XSLT, for instance, from Schematron. That will be an option. Uh, can you click on the help icon just to view the help provided? Uh, I'm not sure. I understand exactly what that refers to. Maybe. Perhaps uh, it refers to, um, you know, these uh, icons here. 
So each uh, validation error has uh, a link to the style guide and uh, that goes uh, for um, for schematron errors as well so you can put a link to the style guide to that particular topic that uh, where uh, um, you can find out uh, more about uh, what uh, rule from the style guide you are um, violating so yeah you can click <laughs> Uh, we just went through all the questions. Thanks for uh, uh, asking so many questions. And uh, 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 this webinar uh, was the fourth webinar in a series of seven webinars. The previous ones uh, are available uh, if you go to uh, company events. Uh, you have here past events, for instance, and you can find the previous webinars and the uh, uh, the recording will be available also if you click the event page and here you find also the upcoming webinars so you can register for uh, the following webinars as well uh, we will cover uh, uh, data next uh, week uh, uh, getting started with data using oxygen xml editor and i think this is useful also if you are already using data because uh, gives you kind of an overview on the latest additions that we uh, we added to Oxygen. We plan to follow up this with uh, uh, two or three more advanced webinars on DITA, covering maybe uh, reuse, refactoring, DITA 1.3 support. And then the following webinars will uh, cover the collaboration part with the web author and the uh, uh, trying to involve subject matter experts and people to review content, for instance, and uh, also the collaboration platform that we have, uh, Oxygen Content Fusion. Uh, additional details, as I mentioned, are available on uh, our website on the events page. Uh, that being said, thanks, thanks, thank you, Alex, again for uh, presenting. Uh, thanks all for attending. Thank you all for attending. And uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, next week, same time, same day. <laughs> Goodbye. Till next time. Bye-bye. And don't forget to uh, uh, send an email to support at oxygenxml.com if you want to have early access to that uh, Veil plugin that Alex uh, presented. Thanks again. Goodbye. And uh, see you soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye-bye.